Jeremy Allison. Okay, just need one more. Veronica is joining. All right, now we have a definite quorum. Jeremy, this is Irene. How many people do you have um, on this leadership a meeting tonight from the board or that you're expecting hello is anybody there hello Hello, is anybody there? No, people are here. We're just waiting for a quorum. Just hold on. We'll, we'll be with you in a minute. Oh, Hi, I think Veronica, I'm sorry I'm late. I think we have the quorum now. We ha if we have the quorum now, Jeremy, we can get ready to start this thing. Jeremy? Is Jeremy on mute or? 
I don't know. He posted something about someone, okay. you know, anybody wants to be um, a co-host. I can't be co-host because I don't know how long I'll be here. I don't know if Al, you want to be co-host Al or something? Oh, yeah, he can make it. I'll do whatever. I have no idea what, uh, you know, what the agenda for this evening is. I know we're talking about the um, the group home. Yeah, it's about the group home. And I know it came up as, a, as an issue. And Jeremy and, and someone, oh, here it is. Here's Jeremy starting the meeting now. Okay. All right. I guess Jeremy's Jeremy's highlighting it's a proposed group home relocation for twenty four thirty six Kinsland Avenue. Jeremy, I have a question. Why is the board having a leadership meeting if they don't know the information about what they're going to be voting on and how it's going to affect the community we've got so we know what we're voting on irene it's just a matter of um setting up the emergency meeting just so that the people are aware of what's going on and we can hear from the public right i think we're going to go right into the gallery. if jeremy's not here we will go right into the gallery session right if i may yeah. Al, just let me explain to Irene that a lot yes, of a lot of people on Kingsland Avenue sent emails to Jeremy, which he then forwarded to all of the uh, board members. Okay. So we are aware of what has been said. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So Al, do you want to? Um, yeah. Do we have a list of the gallery uh, the gallery speakers? I don't think so. I, I mean, we, we've seen a lot of the um, letters or emails that were sent. Well, board members usually go first. We will listen to the according, gallery. This is a little bit agenda, different. According to your gender, it's just a matter of having a gallery session. Gen and I guess the board can decide or you know discuss it among ourselves um, and decide on which way we're going to vote. But we we always should hear from the uh, from the constituents first. Al, what information do we have that we can share with the um, gallery so that way they know exactly what's going on? <laughs> Most of them, Veronica, have been at the um, joint meetings at housing and uh, ha you know health and social services had last week, and they've been sending in emails all week long yes but that you said like you said most of them maybe not all of them have the information. right is there anyone who hasn't sent who's in the gallery now who hasn't sent in an email that was read by the office and uh members of the board hey guys this is john i mean I can... uh, just a just a quick thing so so on this just a, just as a recap there this is a site that um an organization, I don't know what organization it is, is looking to use, and it says relocate. Um, so what does that mean? Is a location there somewhere around here now that they're relocating? Or right. is it a new site? No, it's, they want to relocate some of these men from one site to this one. It was, site. the site was the one on Kingsland Avenue, 2436. Now, where are they relocating yeah. from? Is it around the corner? Or is it some other no, borough? No. Um, I. We we'll need to get back to you with the exact Bronx. address. We we'll need to get back to you with the exact address, but it's in the Bronx. It's in the Bronx. In the Bronx. Yes. And um, so the, 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 state, so, so, uh, the state, the Office of um, People with Disabilities, rejected the site because they said the area has been oversaturated with group homes. And so the state so, so the state licenses these sites, right? Is this OMH? Well, hold on, no, hold on. Let's, just, let's, 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 let's listen to what Sandy just said. So the state has already uh, de uh, denied the, the home, just FYI. 
They said that. Right. Said that. So just like, right. I don't think the public knows that. So I, I want the public to hear that after our discussions, they came back to us last week. They let us know that the area is oversaturated. Our area is oversaturated with group homes. So they are not moving forward with the group home. Right. So they're the not state, licensing it. The state ha will not, the Office of you know, disability, people with disabilities would not grant them the permit to open the home. They, the uh, off, the people from United Several Palsy or, or the group that uh, came to us was asking us to allow them to have the group home there. If it's not they, licensed by the state, how can they do this? They, these All these sites have to be licensed by not, the state. No, no, no. The state would only was not giving them permission to have the group home in that house. But, but the state pays them. They, they're they're right. also reimbursed so the state. They, so if the state said no, how are they paying for this? They would like, they, because they thought that maybe the board would say, it's okay, we'll allow this. Maybe because it's, you know, it may be oversaturated, but we will allow them to have it. That's so they want to they want a waiver. That's the so they want a waiver of some kind. Correct. So what? what, 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 what go ahead, Al. Go ahead, Al. Let me say something. Let me say something, uh, Sandy. Before we get into this, the right? State, the state said no because they're oversaturated. Correct. We agree, and we've been fighting for that constantly. That we're oversaturated with homeless shelters, group homes, and and the such. So, and the community doesn't want it. I. I, I don't see this as a, I see this as a no-brainer. The community doesn't right. want it. The state doesn't exactly want it. Think, yeah. We're all saturated. I don't see why we would even discuss this. I mean, right. I, I, have no I, problem, I have no problem with the group home. I have no problem with the people that were, that were in the group home. That's not my concern. My concern is the oversaturation in our community and in the Bronx as a whole. And I think we just have to say no. Again, that's that's my take, but uh, you know we will each have a vote. But I would like to hear from our constituents and see how they feel. I mean, this particular house is a few blocks from my house, and the other. This is John, by the way, and it's a very small house. It's a seven hundred and twenty mm -hmm. square foot house. It's not ADA compliant, so if anybody has disabilities, mobility wise, they're not going in and out of this house. It's a very small house, and 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 Oral knows also. It's also I think multiple dwelling code does not allow more than three people who are unrelated in a zone such as this, which is an R2 zone. So even on a programmatic base, I don't know how this will this work, but it'd be a mood issue because they're saying it's oversaturated and they're right. asking the community for a waiver. And it seems like nobody is apt to give them a waiver or give them an, uh, an, a, you know, a change in that. I mean, like Al said, it's a, it's a mood issue. Why are we even- You're you know, absolutely the very right. Concern. John, One, you're absolutely concern. right. My concern is once we give a waiver to one, what's what's to say we shouldn't give a waiver to another or to another and Absolutely. to another? I think it's again, it's not anything against the group home or the the disability that those young uh, young men or or the men have. Well, they're not that have. young; they're forty. To well, whatever it is, it's not. It against doesn't them. matter. Age doesn't it has matter. Nothing to do with so. their disability. It has to do with the fact that the, our community is oversaturated with group homes, and for that, I would say. I would say no. I mean, that's, and, and, and that's, this is a very unusual thing because typically the state is fighting for these, and the state is actually saying no, and usually we're the ones saying no. So if well, the state is saying no, well, there's an not. oversaturation. That's why. So yeah, that's why. And, yeah. And I think the and my point because I am on the board at Bronx Psychiatric and OMH. This is another state organization, the other side with disabilities. There are requirements for the sizes of rooms where clients or patients, if you want to call them, can be put or placed. And how can you place five men in two small bedrooms? Yeah, I agree with you, Sandra, but I think the, the crux of it is like Al said. Right. I think we all know the answer. So, well, I mean, I guess we can make it. What, just it'll, it'll, so it's, so it's, do we want to start said. hearing from the gallery? And yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold, hold on, everyone. I, I think, hold on, everyone. I think Al is Al is correct, but I think it's okay, even though it's a mute point. This is good that we're allowing the public to see the discussions and how we're advocating for them, and to hear their opinions about this, 
So right now, this is probably more of an informative discussion, um, right. but to let you know that we, you know, this just turned down and they did discuss ideas about having us maybe have a waiver, but we're not going to do that. But we'll, what we would like to hear, like Al said, from the public. So if you can open up the gallery, that would be great to hear. Right. Or are we, uh, or are we still, excuse me, Sandra, or are we still have to vote on it as a, uh, as a, as a board. So. Excellent. Okay. Al, go ahead. You know how I feel, but again, the board members may feel different. I think we should hear from the constituents first. Okay. Al, Robert press has his hand raised. Anybody else who wants to speak, please raise your hand. How do you raise your hand? Going to where the there's icon a, there's a little, is there's the a little icon at the bottom of your of your screen. It should be there somewhere, but I guess if you have a phone, it's more difficult than 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 it is. Yeah, there's, there's and it looks at the like top. a man. It looks like a face, and you just press. No, that. I, I know what it looks All like. Right, we'll, we'll, give every, we'll give everyone a chance to speak that wishes to speak again uh, within a two minute uh, uh, category. Otherwise, we'll get carried away. Uh, exactly. I'm going to wait, Al, for others to speak first. Okay. All right, Bob. But, you but, what did you say, Robert? I, I I'd rather it. have others speak first. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Irene. Do you wish to say something? Uh, yes, uh, Al. But I'm going to wait until all the other residents speak first, if, if it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna give every everyone a, two minutes. You know, but okay. please keep it to two minutes. I'm going to stop you after after two minutes. So, if you go beyond that, please excuse me if I sound harsh. But I will stop you after two minutes. Okay, go ahead now. You can so wh whoever's first, Al, they they can go. May I speak? Yes, just please give us your name before you uh, speak, and then go ahead. My name is Ruth. I live on Kingsland Avenue, and I feel that the group home would not be appropriate given the family atmosphere on this block. There are many, many children, and I think that the size of the home that you wanted to versus the number of people would not be appropriate for this block. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, next person again. I, I, I we, we agree with you. Next. Uh, my name is John Vincy. I'm a homeowner on the block, and I would also not approve of this small housing that is there it is right. not a good uh proper place to put something like this uh would ruin the atmosphere of this uh block and area and um uh i i don't feel you're placing it in, in a proper area you already have upset the neighborhood people that vote and uh, people are beginning to already talk about moving, and that's how upset they are. Um, uh, we feel that, uh, number one, this was kind of like uh, tried to get approved before anybody knew about it. Luckily, right. one did uh, over, here. Try, uh, over here, over here, and alerted uh, the, the block uh, and the rest of us, and that's why we're on, and we uh very much disagree with placing that home here on kingsland avenue and uh would hope that you uh would vote no on the issue and uh we would continue to vote for you people excellent thank you, thank my you name, so much my name thank is you so john. much okay john thank you so much homeowner thank you thank you john uh next who, who else was next um I can't I, see it on here. Rob Press wanted to speak, and Irene. Is there anyone else? Okay. Oh, Irene has her hands up. Uh, I, 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 I have Robert, my hands Robert up. Robert had his Robert. Someone Robert had his hands up. John Michael. But uh, Robert, do you want to go, Robert? I saw your hands. Yes. I don't know. Yes, I want to listen to the other people before because I was on the, at the committee meeting and I spoke. So I want to okay, give my opinion okay. later. Okay, Robert. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Okay. Press. Okay, there's um, another uh, Robert. No, that, was, that was Joe Buck. I'm Rob Gazavoda. I live right next door to uh, the home that's in question, 2436 okay. Kingsland Avenue. Okay. So uh, I live right next door. I have three small children, nine, seven, and four. As we know, people with these kind of disabilities, cerebral palsy, do have behavioral issues. These are grown men between the ages of 40 and 60 years old. Five gentlemen 
um, with 24 hour care aides. So there's a lot of people in one home. Um, right. They currently reside at 1880 Boston Road. Um, I see. I looked up th that location, and there are some complaints in New York City Department of Buildings from the location of 1880. So we really don't want to bring that to this neighborhood because there's lots of children here. That's one reason. Another reason is there's no driveway at all. They don't have adequate uh, entrance and exit to get in or to get out of the home. Um, there's nowhere to park. There is busing that is going to be required to take them to their group home, to take them to their uh, school or, you know, wherever the program that they go during the day. There's right. buses that come regularly. There is no uh, driveway. So they'll be parking in other people's driveway. Okay. Other people that live next door or first responders. We have police officers, doctors, lawyers, MTA officials. We need to access our driveways at 24 hours, seven days a week to respond to emergencies. We need to get out. So we can't okay. have to block by buses. It's a large inconvenience and it's, a, a, you know, it's going to be a problem for the whole community. Those are my uh, main concerns. Plus the house is built in 1920, probably has water damage. It has like a sub pump. Um, yeah, it has a sub pump. It probably has asbestos lead paint. Okay, Robbie, you have 10 seconds. Okay. And, and, and that's it. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think I saw another person here. Um, there's another person, Robert. He just has Robert next to his name, Robert. Yeah, that's me. How you doing? Okay, go ahead, Robert. All right, thank you. I just want to just piggyback off of what Robert Gasaviato said. This is this is a community area. This is where all, all we have families. I have my grandchildren coming over here all the time. My my son that lives with me is a firefighter. He needs to get in and out. Uh, gotcha. And I live right across the street from this house. So to to have that there and to have all this traffic and not to mention what kind of element may be coming in for one of the family members may be coming to visit. We just don't want that in our community. Got gotcha. you. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I think is Jenny. Um, Tim Bone, yeah, Tim. Yes, I'm, I'm hi. A, How are you? Okay, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Go ahead, Jenny. I agree. With, I second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth that everybody said. But my concern going forward is this. So once I found out about all this information, right away notified my neighbors with other neighbors, and we're such a close knit neighborhood that obviously that that's why you got the abundance of emails and calls to your office, right, right? But my concern going forward is understanding the process. You're saying that the state is backing out. The community board is communicating that we have to vote. You guys have to vote on something. And what happens going forward? How we communicated about something like this? Because I was able to get in touch with a homeowner. I don't know if he's on the phone. I was able to get in touch with a realtor. Like, I don't know if I went overboard with everything because of my concern. I know a lot of other neighbors did the same thing in trying to do their own background information, but how does the community board support us as residents? Shouldn't you guys be doing all that and communicating and filtering that to us? No, well, well, Jenny, I, I think you raise, a, you raise a good point, but um, we're not, we're not all, all, all knowing, all seeing. So like like the saying goes, see something, say something. And I think you you guys or whatever did a wonderful job contacting the office and we got involved. Um, and that's why we have this meeting. So, you know, you know, you are our eyes and ears out there. So if you see something, the, the community board is there for you to call, to complain, and then and then Jeremy has to, and everybody here has to look look into it and 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 cover your concerns. And and already, you know, we were going to do that. We had this meeting, but already the state said no. So we're just having this meeting to show you that we are on top of things. We're trying our best, and it's not going to happen. And and if it, if they do try to do it, do it now, we know, you know, ninety nine point nine percent of you guys are saying no, so it's not going to happen. But will what will we hear that this evening that you voted? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to vote. We're, we're going to vote. We're going to vote right after this. The the the, the leadership so committee will vote on it. Asking, It'll be a public vote. You'll hear the votes. You'll hear you'll hear the vote. Community board votes. How does that communicate? They put a, they put a letter. They put a letter together. They put a letter. They, they put a letter together that we you met. We voted right right Al, We'll put a letter together and send it to, to yes. um yeah. yeah. We put a letter together and and send it to everyone concerned, all all of the stakeholders to know that the community board is against this thing. 
when you say stakeholders, is that the people that are interested in buying the property or is that the homeowner and the realtor as so well? Oral, 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 people oral, interested oral. in buying the property. Yeah. So here, okay. here's the thing, Janine. So this is John. The, the way it works is yep, yep. What, once the, well, they're asking us for a waiver. The only way this could go forward is since the state rejected it as if the right. community board approves it and they go back and they say, look, they we're not us going a waiver. to or wait, let me finish. Or so if they go back and they say, look, the community board gave us a waiver and then we can move forward and, and, and lift that objection. Obviously, with all the conversations here, the community board is not going to give them a waiver or so we send a letter of objection or we do not approve and that should kill the project. So the, 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 the short answer is if we vote no here, there shouldn't be a project happening on that block and you'll see the open vote and then Al or whoever will send the letter in and this will all be gone. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Thanks, John. Okay. Anything else? I, th I think oh, we're good oh, here, right? Go ahead. No, you, one question. you have Joe Buck that wants to speak and you have John Michael that wants to speak. You got it. Thank you. Right. Okay, okay, Joe, Joe Buck. Uh, uh, yeah, I live on the block. I'm literally two houses away. I'm the one with the big front yard. Um, we're first responders in this house as well. Uh, okay. That was definitely a concern of mine. Uh, being able to come in and out. And I know we, we own a lot of cars here because we, we also have family that lives with us. But the, my, my concern was more of um, during COVID, we have a pandemic. We don't know what the world is gonna bring us. But during COVID and during this pandemic, does anyone realize that this was the number one area for nine months out of 2020 that had the highest rate of COVID? Mm. And then yes. we're gonna bring in more people We knew that. To, to overpopulate the hospitals in our community. So I, I just think not only just is that a small house, but I think any house on this block or any house in this neighborhood would not be beneficial, especially coming out after a pandemic, especially Good point. Good point. being unknown of what's gonna happen. You know, there's new strands of this pandemic every week right. as we talk, uh, being firsthand on, for, on site, being a first responder, looking at the stuff that, uh, you know, I've seen in the past three years, it's, uh, it made me think differently about this world. It made me di think differently about how do we take care of our family, our neighborhood, our neighbors, and who we entrust in our uh, neighborhood as well. And I just think it's an overrun of, uh, of, of that situation, especially right now. So not just that house, but any house in this block mm -hmm. would just overrun that, that, uh, that sort of uh, safety concern for me. So that's exactly the point I wanted to bring up. Um, okay. I, I just you got 10 you seconds. That. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank, thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, who else is John? John, Michael, the the, the, the Rosa? Yeah, De La Rosa. De La Rosa, I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. No problem. Yeah, I just have two concerns. Me um, being a police officer, I know I dealt with a lot of people that had disabilities. And usually when they commit crimes, um, they're never charged due to their disability. So right. there's no way of us knowing whether they have any behavior issues in gotcha. terms of aggression towards children, towards other adults. So usually when we respond to it, uh, let's say a person with disability at a group home injures someone else, they just get sent to the hospital for evaluation. They never actually get charged with a crime. So we, there's no way of us knowing. And my my daughter plays all the time with Robert, right at 2438 Kingsline Avenue. Our kids are always play in front of his house, and you know, we don't. Not saying that everyone with disability has you know aggression behavior, but you know right. it, they do. Uh, majority of the time, do have aggression behavior because you know they they aggravate it because they can't express themselves correctly or whatever the situation is. So that's a big concern for us. And second is um, the traffic, uh, you know, being a police officer, I know double parking is a very, it's probably <laughs> the number one reason um, m majority of the uh, accidents happen because you have a car trying to get around the, uh, the vehicle that's gonna drop them off because there's no driveway in front of their home. So now right. the vehicles that are gonna go try to go around 
um, right. are probably going to go head on with another vehicle coming down the block. And we all know in this block that uh, we have a speeding problem. And I'm, I'm pretty aware that everyone knows that we've been trying to advocate for. You got 10 seconds, bump. John. Sorry about that. Yeah, for, uh, no problem for a speed bump. So that's another uh, major concern when it comes to uh, traffic. So uh, those are just my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, um, and, uh, who else is next? Um, e Erica, I think Erica or or Nick. Nick, you want to go, Nick? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Nick. Great. I just want to reiterate. Thank you for the chance to speak. Just for the record, um, just to voice my objection as well. I live two blocks down. I have two kids. Um, and just to uh, amplify what people have been saying about safety concerns, especially with um, the traffic. Um, that's the one thing I've been because at, at our la at the last meeting, they mentioned how the vans would be coming to pick up the residents there, and there really is no place for them um, to park. Uh, the last speaker also mentioned. You know, it happens a lot when you have delivery trucks and um, other, other other trucks. Right. Going they do go into oncoming traffic, um, even if they make the pickups at the corners. Those corners are very known for accidents that have been happening. So those intersections are dangerous. So that's that's my point. Uh, thank you so much. I really hope uh, you don't give the waiver. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate that. Um, Bernadette, I don't know if you can. Um... You can, because I have to run to a meeting. I don't know if you can manage it from here with the with the um, minute with the um, timing, but I think I, I think Erica, did you speak yet? Erica is, is next. I did not. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to give kudos to my neighbors who were knocking on doors, letting us know about these um, yeah, these plans that were had. Um, uh, it's it's kind of uh, I was a little taken back because you know we're learning on how these things work. Um, what if the state did say yes, and where would the community board stand on that part? If the word wasn't spread to the community, would there be a point? You guys with letters and say, hey, uh, the state has approved and we're going to have like an open forum like tonight. Yeah. Or is it because we found out now no. that now everyone's making a stink and jumping on board? Um, you know, again, it's a very tight knit. Everyone here works. You kind of see people come in and out. Um, we, we know each other, but don't really know each other in this neighborhood. But it's really nice to see that everyone came together, logged on tonight um, to sit here and say, OK, we this is not something that's uh, doable for our community. Um, so to my neighbors that, like I said, uh, did the legwork, thank you very much uh, for speaking up. So, yeah, that was the only question I had in regards to this. So we're better prepared for something like this, that it does happen in our area. Erica, now. just let me just let me clarify. The community board is made up of community pe people from the community. So basically what we do is we try to support anything the community is for or against. So if the community comes out against something, more than likely we would go along with the community. Um, what we need to do is, and you see it tonight, you have a good out, outpouring of neighbors from that, com from that community, which is laudable. The problem is sometimes when we need everybody to come together to fight for another community, we also have to remember we have to fight for each other to protect each other, to watch each other's backs. One of the point, things that, one of the things I've been fighting for a long time is the fact that we're overburdened in our community with group homes and homeless shelters, and we just say no more. Period. That's it. There is no reason to put any more in the Bronx. And, and yeah, I just wanted to clarify that with Erica. Uh, yeah, and, and, and to and to Erica's and to Erica's concern, we have stopped. A few things already. We stopped a, a, a homeless shelter from coming to the Bronx, even after they had approved and wanted to go ahead and do it. The community came together, wrote a bunch of letters, uh, and 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 fought against this thing. And and is no more homeless shelter coming into the Bronx. So Erica, we do you know it's not like it's you know a done deal. We do fight. We do fight tooth and nails for you guys. So. It is. We already did one. We, we were very successful in stopping um, a homeless shelter from being built in the Bronx um, because we were inundated with them, like Al mentioned. So it, it has worked. Um, I have to, uh, Oral, I have to correct you that we still have two other, two other shelters that propose shelters. We'll, we'll fight it. We'll fight that, that, we we'll fight that also mm -hmm. then. We'll fight that also then because yes, we stopped. Exactly. Did, but didn't we stop one already? We, did we stop one already? Yes. 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 We stopped. Okay. We went through their proposal. Okay, so fine. So we'll so we'll, we'll do it again. Exactly. Anyway, um, I don't know if we can. We can I can't. I can't. Go ahead. I have to. 
people have to be aware that we're an advisory group. Yes, yeah, yes. We, 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 all, we are an advisory we, group and, and, and a fighting group too. We, we do fight this. Yeah, we can tell the state we don't want something as we did with the group homes that came in. We have two more that we're fighting now. Um, right. But they just did it. You know, the, the road diet was another thing we fought that the city decided to do it. They did it anyway. So That's all true. we can do is advise and then hopefully get us in. Yeah, but we, need, we, we need all you guys to come in there and fight with us too, though. We need everybody here to come on board. When we have when we have meetings, public outcries. We need we need um like like today, people to show up and maybe put a lot of pressure on the politicians to stop something from happening. Any other speakers? Yeah, uh, I Alex, think it's time for I me to speak, speak now. Al. Let me speak. Okay? Let me speak, now? Irene. Okay, okay I was ahead of you. All right. I'm a former member of Community Board 8, and I voted on group homes. They're not as bad as everybody thinks, number one. Okay. Number two, uh, I was the by, the co-chair of the oh. task force, the community okay. task force, and I was the person who spoke to the mayor about the third homeless shelter on White Plains Road because the mayor's people, the Blasio's people, were still working under Mayor Adams and that's why the community board couldn't get anything done with Mayor Adams. It was still Mayor de Blasio's people, all right? Uh, and, it, and within a few weeks, all of a sudden, everything changed, and the homeless shelter on White Plains Road was stopped. I'm not saying I did it. Everybody was part Regina of it. Regina Kochevich has joined the meeting. Go ahead, okay. go ahead, Robert. Someone, someone now, just joined the meeting. It's okay, Robert. What I want to ask, though, is how can the leadership committee vote tonight when you have... 40 board members, the entire board is supposed to be voting on this item. If you're going to have a resolution, the entire vote board has to vote, not just the leadership committee. We That's understand that, Robert. Maybe we make the motion tonight and we bring it up at the full board meeting. Well, it says on there you're voting tonight, okay? Otherwise, I, 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 I why is there a need for the other board members to be on this board? Robert, we're voting to put the motion forward. Put the, okay, and well, it doesn't say that on the agenda, okay? And it, it doesn't have to be voted on. It we've just brought to the board. Okay, thank you. Okay, Robert. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification for everyone. Um, I have to. I have to. I have to leave. So, um, um, we want to vote now, or um, Al. We have to make a motion, Oral. And right. I have. I have a spoken. Wait a minute, but Irene in. has to go. Thank you. Uh, first You're of welcome. all, I just want to thank Bernadette. Um, Ferrara, who is a community board 11 member. As a former member of community board, I would like to thank the board for showing up tonight. But I want to thank Bernadette because she looked out for me. She looked out for our residents on Palin Garden. She said, Irene, you know, that this is your block. Did you know that they want to bring a group home? Why didn't community board 11 reach out to me as a district leader? Why didn't somebody from the community board say, Irene, that's on your block. We got to notify all the residents. I heard it from, from Bernadette, and I thank you, Bernadette. I also want to thank all the neighbors, Janine, and and all, everyone who's been calling Ruth in and emailing. Has that's joined our the meeting. But I want to share something with you that's very important. Like we took down the methadone clinic, it's the same way that we take these things that are, we don't want in our communities. And Bernadette knows that we're all fired up, but we got to empower our neighbors to do the work. Janine knocked on doors, we had other people calling, emailing, and we did the work and I congratulate you, but our job is not done yet. The District 11 Coalition that's on Facebook is pushing people to be notified when these things happen on our block. Join and make sure that you're knowing what's going on so that when Elle has a problem in a different side of the community, they can reach out to us and we all join together. We are an army of people that we are not gonna tolerate whatever the city wants to throw at our faces. That's number one. Number two, our second thing we're gonna be working on is another petition for the speed bump. And this time it's not gonna get denied because we're gonna take it all the way to city hall. The, the, the last thing I wanna point out to you, as our neighbors continue to work hard for what has happened, it's a lesson that we are learning that many of these things that we're tolerating, they wanna put them on different blocks. Today, I got a phone call from the methadone clinic, the people in the residence, and they said that at 2500 Smith Road, they're going to put a laundry mat in front of a methadone clinic. So we right. win. So I congratulate you and keep up the good work. Okay, that, that's okay, 10 seconds. Thank you, Irene. All right, I'd like to, so we, we can speed it up. I'd like to make a motion that the community board 
uh, send a letter of uh, denial to the group home. The I second home. the motion. I'm going to bring that up before the uh, the entire board on the uh, adopt uh, meeting at the end of the month meeting. Excellent. Okay. Is there any is there any is there any discussion from board? This is strictly from board members. Any discussion from board members? I think we wanted to speak to speak on this. Um, we, we, we have to close out right now. Um, can you, can we, can, I mean, everyone, if you're against it, we all, we're all going to go against this thing. So, um, well, we have I mean, to, end this to talk, so. Okay. I mean, I'll hand, handle it from here because I, I have to, I, I have to go to a yes. meeting. Okay. Oral, thank okay. You. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye -bye. Is there anybody who wanted to speak that didn't get a chance to speak? Yeah. Gene did. Hold on. Hi, Gene. Holy cow, man. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So the one thing I want the uh, I request that the board look into is the finances of this. The people I'm associated with uh, this time next year, there's going to be a massive audit on all these government programs, the homeless shelters, the methadone clinics, and these group homes. Because as a lieutenant, in light of the lieutenant governor uh, being indicted and now resigning, these scams are going all over and it's not coming up in any of these conversations with the homeless shelters, the methadone clinics of how they're charging the taxpayers exorbitant amounts. And then it's getting shoveled back to the elected officials. That's why the state is pushing back on it because there's a lot of pressure on these elected officials and all eyes are on them. So I just wanted to shed light on that because it's pertinent to this and it needs to come into the discussion on where's our money going to. So I'm, I'm asking the, the community board Whenever a uh, homeless shelter, methadone clinic, group home, because it seems like we're going through this fight every single year. You got it. You get, we got to go through the finances, and that conversation never comes up within the within the meeting. So, if we could do that going forward, um, I, I'm in support with the community. Uh, I think all these programs need to be relooked at, reevaluated, and done responsibly, and not involve uh, illicit behavior. So, thank you for the time. Thank you for the meeting, and uh, we're with you. Gene, thank you. That's a good point, and we'll, right. we'll, take, that, we'll take that into consideration. Uh, Can I ask a question about the finances? Is that uh, does this mean that the community board should be uh, filing FOIAs for for you know for, for financials? I would recommend it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, but just quickly, this is John. FOIAs are public access records. So if, if it's readily available to the public, open records data, then you can FOIL it. You can't FOIL my mortgage. So uh, if you're a nonprofit entity that's not a religious institution, you can FOIL them. But even as a religious institution, you're not, they're not filling the proper form for the 990s or anything like that. So in this particular situation, FOILing the finances won't work because it's a private institution that owns the property. Thank you, John. Uh, any, John. Any, any discussion from board members on the uh, proposal? None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, maybe, you know what? Okay, Aye. Wait, wait. Let no, me, let me clarify. Do it right. uh, all in favor of us sending a letter of objection to the group home, uh, that would be a yes. If you're in favor of the group home, that would be a no. So all those in favor? Yes. 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 Anyone? Anyone opposed? That it's unanimous. We will bring to the full board that the uh, leadership committee voted unanimously to reject the group home. Thank okay. you. Is there All right. Any, any other further business? Al, I just want to respond it. to something that um, Irene had brought up about not notifying the community. If we don't have email addresses for the community, or if they don't join in in our meetings, we have no way of notifying them. So send your email in to Jeremy, the district manager, join our meetings. The calendar is posted online on CB11 Agreed. site. That's really the only way you get information because that's how we all found out about it through the emails. Right. Phyllis, what exactly might right. be a good idea for the office if I may speak, I hope, is that okay. there should be maybe an email list of people who are interested insert it in a topic that's going to be discussed well so, along with that they should come to the meetings to be quite right honest. that's true 
uh, can I can I make a suggestion with regards to that? Um, okay. We're not going to, you know, unfortunately, uh, I I totally agree with the emails, etc. But not every block in Community Board Eleven uh, participates, unfortunately. So my suggestion is, whenever we have a block that a group home is going to, there could be there could be a uh, a letter notification, even put in the mailboxes. I know that's old school, but we, we just don't have privy to everybody's emails. That's a, a challenge that everybody has. Every civic association has. We would love to involve and embrace everybody, but not everybody is participating for one reason or the other, not because they don't want to. But if a particular block, uh, you know, there's a group home being done on a particular block, then if there's not a representative that lives there, then they should just be flyered. Even if it's just like both sides of the block, um, we could get one of the high school kids to do this. They need community hours. So I think that's a suggestion we have to look at and add to um, the next time it's going to happen. You made a good suggestion. Also, you could notify the different um like uh, East Chester Neighborhood Association, the Van Ness, so that they can get to their members if it's in a specific area. Right, like or this particular area, I kept on saying to myself, I know somebody lives on that block. I know, I said, who do we know? And then I, I saw, then I said, oh my God. I said, Irene lives on that block. I said, you gotta let her, she's gotta be informed. And then she could speak to her neighbors, et cetera. Right. So, and, but the thing is, if it comes from the community board, we don't have to worry about emails or whatever. Get a flyer. This is what's going on. Stick it in some of the mailboxes. I mean, we have to be able to reach out to everybody. Not everybody um, is going to come to our meetings. But maybe this will actually enhance people to come to more of our committee meetings. That sounds like a great meetings. idea, Bernadette. The only problem with that being manpower to be able to get it done yeah um, i think if we put everything on our website if we can do that absolutely if for example if you told irene about it and gave her a bunch of flyers i'm sure she would have passed it out throughout the whole neighborhood uh yeah. i don't know if every neighborhood has a, a community leader like that that would be able to do that but yeah. it's something we can let the neighborhoods the neighbors know as soon as we know um but i find it to be a problem Al, because as a as the district leader for our district and a former member of community board 11, my email has not changed. Yeah. It's been the same for years, so I didn't get notification. So my concern is that if you do have this problem anywhere in the, in, in our district, you know, that you always count on me and look at the great things we did with the town hall meeting. 1100 people showed up. We flyered, we called, we emailed. It's about us hustling together. It took all of us, every organization. But yes, Elle always reaches out to me when we need something done. But I am empowering other women on each block to do the same because we want to make sure that you guys get connected with community boards and stay active because we cannot tolerate the changes that are coming upon our communities. But I thank you, Elle. I thank you so much and I thank Community Board 11 for sticking up for our, our for our district and for the people of our block. I one, thank of the you things, again. one of the things we have to do, Irene, and I think you've said it a number of times, is come together as a community, not a neighborhood, but a community. And the Bronx is a community and the Bronx has been dumped on for years. There are more group homes in the Bronx than any other borough. And yet our population is fourth. Uh, why do we have people living in group homes in the Bronx when they come from um, uh, when they come from Brooklyn and Manhattan, uh, we take care of our own and everyone should take care of their own community. But, you know, I'm tired of every time you turn around because the property values are less in the Bronx. People dump on the Bronx and it's not okay. But what happens to your community today will happen to another community tomorrow. So what we have to do is work together. If you see this happening in another community, come out in force to support that other community because that makes us stronger. Uh, yeah, we're stronger together, and that's and that's uh, that's an important aspect. So uh, the motion carried unanimously. We will bring that to the full board as a unanimous vote from the leadership committee. Uh, is, is there any other business? No, uh, I, no. Just, I, 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 just want, I just wanted to point out just a, just one thing. What Al says right now, what's happening in the Bronx? What Al says is very important. Like right now, I'm involved with the upzoning and the issues that are going on. Uh, with the rezoning uh, in Bruckner, like in Throgs Neck, because 
when the Morris Park, when the Metro North train stations come by Park Chester Van Ness, by Morris Park, we're going to be dealing with a lot of this. So we need to reach out and help other communities, and then we need to call on them and stay united. I'm just yes. pointing that out there. Thank you, Bernadette. You're 100% right. That upzoning is going to be a problem for us the same way as it is for Throgs Neck right now. What happens right. to Throgs Neck, they're going to try to do here. And once they do that, you can say goodbye to neighborhood because you're going to find rises all over the place. They want to change the low density into high density. Absolutely. And, and the only way they could do a lot of that is in rezoning. And once you lose, when you deal with the lose the zoning, you lose your community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. On that ready. note, CB10 is having a, a rezoning meeting on Tuesday at St. Benedict's. Yes. St. Benedict's Church. And what, I will be time, there. What time, Phyllis? Uh, seven o'clock, I believe. Yeah, I feel right. Or seven. Thank you. It's on their website, CB10. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Any other business? No, I just want to wish everyone a joyous and happy Easter and Passover and any other holiday. And Robin <laughs> All that good stuff. Happy Thank something. You, <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. All right, take care, you guys. Everyone. Have a good night. Thanks Thank for the meeting. Ended. Take care. Pray meeting ended at 7.30. This is Christine again. I got disconnected. Has left the meeting. A participant has left the meeting. Jenny?